And here's your host of Living the Country Life, Betsy Freeze. Looking to attract more wildlife to your acreage? One simple way to do that is by planting a food plot. Today we're going to talk to Todd Bogenschutz, and he's with the Department of Natural Resources. Todd, welcome to the show. Hi, Betsy. How are you? I'm great. Now tell us, what is a food plot? We're standing in one right now. Basically, a food plot is something that folks uh, plant on their property when they want to attract wildlife to a particular area on their property. Uh, the purposes of, of a food plot are varied. Um, winter food plots generally are providing food. Uh, they can also provide winter cover depending on what you plant. And, and what's this right here? This is grain sorghum here, and this would be something probably pretty typical that we'd recommend for pheasants, deer, turkey, quail. A lot of birds would use this. The songbirds use it. It's a smaller seed, so it's pretty attractive to a lot of different species. Okay. And uh, what are some of the different animals that people really want to attract into these food plots? Um, deer is a big one, turkey, pheasants, quail, and then just songbirds in the wintertime. What are some of the different plants you can put in a food plot? Some of the other things you can plant, corn is obviously another common one that's planted quite a bit. Um, sometimes in the summertime, uh, folks will plant what we call green browse, which could be like clover and alfalfa. Okay. Some winter wheat. It's just greens they eat. It's not so much a grain, but okay. just, and it attracts them throughout the summer. Lower to the ground? Yep, lower to the ground. Just, you know, it's basically. And, th and that would attract even rabbits? Yep, rabbits, and it's good brood habitat for, say, young turkeys, pheasants, quail. All right. Todd, how much land do I need for a food plot? Well, it really depends on what your goals are as a landowner, what you're trying to attract. Um, you know, if you're looking at deer and a lot of deer, you need a big plot. If you've just got a little bit of pheasant cover or a few quail, then you don't need nearly as much. All right. And where do I go to get the seed? Basically, the seed, uh, you can get it from your local Pheasants Forever chapter, Quail Unlimited. Um, a lot of times, the local co-ops have seed left over that they just give away oh, to landowners. Okay. Um, some of the specialty seeds, like if you want to get into the really fancy Australian clover or turnip rape for deer, right. green browse, you can get those at Cabela's or, say, the Sportsman's Warehouse. What kind of maintenance do we need to do over the winter for a food plot? Generally, with winter food plots, Betsy, we don't have to do much in the wintertime. Once you've got a plot to this state, um, you, you've done an excellent job. You know, it's just let the wildlife use it throughout the winter. Come the following spring, you'd basically just come in and chop up the stalks and, you know, do your food plot again. We like to recommend people, you know, planting these annual crops sucks a lot of nutrients out. Right. And there's some benefits to actually doing half the plot one year, half the next year, and just kind of rotating, giving the soil some rest. Do you need to rest. fertilize the ground at all? Yep. Wherever you're planting, you should fertilize. Okay. Is it good to switch crops one year to the next? Rotate? It's good to follow general farming practices and rotate because the soil does get depleted. Like if you did this year after year after year, you'd probably see your, your yields on your, on your grain go down somewhat. So okay. it's good to rotate. And what type of equipment do I need to get started? Well, if you're the landowner that's got the equipment, the typical planter, and uh, obviously the tractor and the disc you need to cultivate the field, and if you're really well off, the sprayer and everything else. Um, if you're a smaller landowner um, and a small plot, you could get by with a hand spreader even that you use in your yard for very small areas. So a lot of times there's general contractors out there that will do this kind of work for landowners if they don't have the equipment. So, Is there a place on my property that is better than others or any place that you want to avoid? Generally, um, it depends on the species you're interested in. Say deer and turkey, you want to keep it close to timber. That's probably where they're going to be in the wintertime. Right. Pheasants, quail, you don't want it next to the trees because then raptors and other predators can prey on them. So you want to keep that out in the grassy cover where those birds are going to winter. Okay. Um, any other tips that you think are important for uh, people that, that want to install the food plots? I think just contact, uh, you know, your local uh, biologists on our staff or the county conservation boards or your local Pheasants Forever chapter. Most of them have brochures and most of them help landowners right, with right. this kind of stuff. So It sounds like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun and I think landowners really enjoy it when they see the wildlife. And sometimes you get the wildlife and then you have too many. That's correct, uh, particularly with deer. You know, we have situations where we can have a lot of deer and, uh, you know, for plots where maybe they were done for, say, pheasants or quail, you know, some landowners don't like seeing all that deer. Right. And, and that's kind of why we do things like sorghum sometimes because deer don't key in on this quite as much as, say, they right. would a corn plot. As, would, as corn. Thank you, Todd, for being on the show. Thank you, Betsy. Sounds like having a food plot can be rewarding and enjoyable.